And I want to bring in, you know, Julian Castro on this because, uh, Julian, Trump is, is doubling down on his anti-immigrant rhetoric as he moves closer to becoming the Republican nominee. The things that he's been saying recently, well, take a listen to some of the things he said just in an interview last night. They're coming from places unknown and they're rough people, in many cases from jails, prisons, from uh, mental institutions, insane asylums. You know, insane asylum, that's uh, Silence of the Lamb stuff. Uh, these, uh, <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. Anybody know Hannibal Lecter? You know, we don't even have teachers of some of these languages. Who would think that? We have languages that are like from, from the planet Mars. Nobody, <laughs> nobody knows how to, you know, speak it. Languages from Mars and immigrants from mental institutions. Julian, <coughs> what is this, do you think, who is this rhetoric geared toward? Well, I mean, it, this is hateful, it's hurtful, it's even Hitler-esque rhetoric at times, and it's geared toward a, a crowd that loves this stuff. And why wouldn't Trump try it again? I mean, this sounds like what he said uh, in 2015 when he came down that escalator, and look what happened in 2016. So he was rewarded politically for this kind of rhetoric. He went on and he did rule things like family separation, and he thinks that that's a blueprint, that he can win again. Uh, I think that the 2020 election showed that when Democrats um, present a positive alternative, uh, when they uh, object and call out that kind of cruelty, that they win. And so uh, if there's anything I think that's a benefit of Trump winning this primary early, it's that this is going to clarify the race and the negative partisanship that Rachel, I know, has written brilliantly about uh, of Democrats rallying around the reality that Trump could well become president again if he's elected, that he is the one on the ballot, that he's promising a national abortion ban, that he's talking about rounding up immigrants, jailing them, the same old cruelty. I think that is the best hope that Democrats have of actually rallying around Joe Biden and winning in November. So it's hateful, cruel rhetoric, uh, but Democrats have to respond to it. I mean, John, yeah, I, does anybody else look, have to I mean, respond to that too? First of all, uh, look, I, I think Julian's trying to make a good point. Look, I don't, I don't have you know Republican or Democrat talking points. The Biden administration and Democrats were a day late, a dollar short when it comes to the border. This issue has risen at least temporarily to the top of the list. I think at the end, people are going to vote, going to vote on the basis of how they feel about economics. At the same time, I have to say to my evangelical friends. This is not the kind of rhetoric that is expected for, for us to hear or support. Remember what St. Paul said about uh, compassion and love and kindness and self-control. You've got to look and see whether this kind of divisive language serves anybody. It's true we have a problem at the border. It needs to be fixed. The Republicans have just blocked the, the most important border bill in a long time. But let's not lose sight of the fact that the Democrats were behind on this. Can they make it up? I really, I, I think maybe they can, but it's, it's really, really tough. And they shouldn't have ignored this. And I think it was part of it because they were afraid of their base. Biden's got a real problem. I mean, he's got a real problem. Everybody knows that we saw the Siena poll. They're going to have to get their act together. And happy talk is not going to fix their problem. <laughs> But there are two different issues, really. And Rachel, I want your thoughts on this, because there is the issue of the humanitarian crisis at the border that has now really become a humanitarian crisis throughout the country. But then there is this specific talk of the people that are, you know, coming from mental institutions and Hannibal Lecter and poisoning the blood of the United States, these languages from Mars. I mean, they're two different things here, Rachel. I mean, they are, but they're not, right? They're connected. And here's the thing. Julian was just right. It is Hitler-esque speak. It is designed to create a culture of, of victimization and fear. And here's the thing that I would say. Yes, the rhetoric is awful. Poisoning the blood of Americans, their Hannibal Lecter, that stuff, it's tempting to us to focus on the rhetoric. I think it's much more important to make sure, especially communities of color, hear about the platform. And the Republicans are not sharing that platform, but that is a very 
very aggressive um, anti-immigrant platform where they're talking about mass deportations on day one. And, and back in 2010, Arizona went through this, uh, Arizona, Alabama, some of the Southern states with a, a show me your papers law. What's coming to the Latino community of America is going to be catastrophic. So I think it's just so much more important to not make it about rhetoric and character and to make it about the tangible threat that those communities are facing. And Julian's just right. It's gonna be um, you know, a long election and we're gonna start to see voters accept that Biden's the nominee because a lot of the tuned out people still don't get that and, and it will come to them and, and we're gonna see what happens. But I would push very hard back on, on Governor Kasich, who I admire greatly, because the number one issue in this election is going to be the fact that I am a half citizen now. All the women of America are facing an eminent probability of living under a national abortion ban that will give women in blue states nowhere to hide. So I think it's really about, um, you know, yeah, immigration is a bad issue. Democrats should have acted on it. The asylum process is being abused by these criminal gangs, and it's caused a humanitarian crisis. But what is coming in terms of humanitarian crisis under a Trump dictatorship, because a man who didn't leave office once isn't going to leave the second time, folks, is going to be pretty, pretty bad for communities of colors, particularly Latinos and Muslim communities. Rachel Bittekoffer, former Governor John Kasich, Secretary Julian Castro, I thank you so much for being with us this morning.